You've tuned into Bellingham Podcast Media Tech for the week of November 6th, 2016, episode 18. As always, I'm AJ Barce. And every now and then, I'm Chris Powell. On this episode, it's Mac versus PC 2016. Fight, 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 fight. Actually, we'll take a look at the new shiny products from Microsoft and Apple. And we'll share our favorite spots in the Birchwood district of Bellingham. You got your shiny new tech toys? You got your cool places to go. But you don't have annoying ads or commercials right here on BPM Tech. Okay, that is my new favorite one that you've done. I, I'm, I'm on a roll right now. Man. I like it. Uh, I like it. Much. The creativity is oozing back into the show. How are you doing, Chris? I'm doing all right. Got a little bit of a sore throat. Uh-oh. Uh, so you're going to get my uh, Barry White wannabe voice uh, today. And I got uh, a big old tanker to water to keep things all set up uh, so I don't get all raspy. Uh, I was teaching a class for two hours uh, on some various Google uh, topics, and I was using my projection voice to reach the the back of the classroom. So unfortunately, I have what every kid in the K-12 school system has right now. Uh, so probably not on my best game, but otherwise, I'm happy to be here. How about you, AJ? I'm doing okay, actually. I've got my, my afternoon tea, because it is tea time. As of recording now, yes, I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let's dive in, because we got a lot. We've got a lot of content for this show. Indeed, let's go for it. So, what was it? So, I think it was at the last recording last week, you and I were, we were watching the Microsoft and Mac uh, and Apple announcements, yes. and we both kind of looked at each other, and it's like, okay, we're techs, we're going to breathe, we're going to let the internet... Flame on, flame off, and then in a week we'll actually talk about what the heck actually got released. So now it's been one week, we've seen the internet do exactly that, so we're actually going to go into what was announced at the Apple announcement last week and the the Microsoft announcement, but put a little bit of a spin. These are very expensive tech toys, and what Chris and I are going to do is actually talk about them in a real perspective, not the, ooh, look at this, ooh, I could probably... No, we're actually going to talk about what these things are, who they're tailored toward, and why or why you might, may or may not want to get these. Okay. And this will be a, a good bullet point list should you have kids that say, I want the new shiny for Christmas. Exactly. We'll give you reasons why you could say probably not this year or probably not at all. Exactly. So uh, should we go in order of the announcements because Microsoft went first? Or? I'm always a fan of chronology, so okay. let's go for it. Okay, <laughs> Microsoft so- had their uh, big old in-person uh, studio announcement of, uh, well, it was in front of a live audience, but it was about the Microsoft Surface Studio, yes. among other things. But the big uh, showstopper. Hoot Nanny. Uh, Hoot Nanny, the, the humdinger, uh, was uh, a big 30-inch how big was the monstrosity? The monstrosity. I love how you always you always call everything the monstrosity if they're over a certain thing. Uh, it was big. I don't remember. Okay, so <laughs> it looked like an easel. It, it, it was definitely an easel, and it looked like a, a big monitor with uh, kind of taking a backwards nap. Um, Microsoft comes out with a Surface Studio, uh, which is for designers and the creatives. So what this means is you're getting a very huge touch screen combined with a, an accessory, which is the dial or the, the dial. The dial. Um, it's a it's a hockey puck, a raised kind of hockey puck style that is an adjustable uh, input device and uh, an input uh, like you add another pen uh, stylus mm-hmm. uh, and you can go nuts uh, designing, creating, being an artist. And both, uh, so it, it still uses gesture input, so you can still use your fingers. It's got a pencil. Uh, I don't know what they call it. It's probably the Microsoft Stylus. Uh, and then the dial, all of which, uh, all of these things are wireless. Um, so if you're if you're thinking, oh, well, you know, guys, we've had USB dials that you could plug into a Mac and PC for years. The cool thing about this new dial is that it sits directly on the screen. And so this new uh, silver raised, almost like a throwback to like the old school eight track days when you had that nice silver tuner. Same thing. Uh, it spins and such, and it interacts with the screen and the application that you're in. What if the application supports that particular uh, functionality? Asterisk if that app uses that. Yeah. Thing. So stay tuned for uh, application <laughs> compatibility with your Surface Dial. Right. Right. Or perhaps maybe they'll give it an ability to customize it again. We don't know. Pre-orders went out and. I believe some of them have started shipping, but oh, yeah. um, I'm not. I don't think it's in the mass wild yet. Not yet. Of course, they'll always get the early adopters and businesses and such to go first. But the specs on uh, the studio, 
uh, the, the Microsoft Surface Studio, a one terabyte drive, uh, Intel Core i5 processor, a gig of, uh, of RAM, two gigabyte GPU, uh, all, all on a sesame seed bun. Right. Uh, starting at the base, low, low price base of- model three thousand dollars. So. Three thousand American USD dollars. Yes, and uh, and pre-orders uh, get the dial for free, so uh, that's wonderful. <laughs> uh, if you really want to go nicely equipped, you can up the storage settings to two terabytes in case you want to store all your files on the local workstation. Uh, stay tuned for a future episode where we talk about file storage and how that. <laughs> we have we ever talked about the cloud? No, we AJ? haven't yet. Okay, well, we may touch on that sometime in the future. Uh, an updated Intel Core i7 processor and four times the amount of RAM for 32 gigs, uh, boys and girls, uh, and a double the amount of GPU for four gigs uh, for that. That is going to run you, AJ. Ooh, just the low, low price of four thousand one hundred. And $99. And now we're into used car mode, folks. <laughs> uh, so if this is something that you are going to be able to use that you make money off of a business or you are a freelance graphic designer or you are a freelance video editor? Maybe. Audio editor? Maybe with that shuttle or with that dial. It yeah. might work as a shuttle well. Uh, it, this may pay for itself from a couple gigs. So that that so let's let's loop back again. So... Again, we're talking – if you're listening to this podcast, and it's like, wow, you guys are actually talking a lot about specs. This is one of those few times where specs are going to matter because we have to bring this into context. Like this is a very expensive tool with a lot of kit under the hood. I mean would, if you use it. Would this be under the Lamborghini, Maserati, or McLaren uh, an analogy for Microsoft in a computer that they are producing? It's not – Sony, Lenovo, Bingo. Uh, Acer, Asus, L, uh, Dell. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot on the hood. How would you describe this one? Is this the Cadillac of PCs? I would definitely. Well, I, I wouldn't say Cadillac. I would definitely. It's it's definitely Formula One racing in the analogy. I mean, this is things that are barely street legal. If, yeah. if we're thinking of computing like a generic, I have a laptop, I have a desktop. Like this is definitely Lamborghini territory for Microsoft. I, this will this will definitely qualify for the first Fast and the Furious movie where Vin Diesel had that Dodge Challenger or was it the GTO? Uh, I think it was a Challenger. It was a Challenger, yes. The one that raised the front wheels off when it accelerated the stoplight. Folks, this one is beyond uh, vulgar specs <laughs> for what you need, and it is, it will definitely get your email delivered very quickly. Sure, um, and a big screen. This is this is uh, definitely a good selling point as you are editing photos. Sure. Dare I pull the pin on that one? Yeah, you can. All right, uh, big real estate to view and to touch and to modify. This is a professional grade device, and there is a lot of attention that hit the tech uh, sites about this. Is it for the the rest of us? <laughs> I don't know, Chris. Like that's that's the thing is you, you nailed it on the head. I actually I, I that and that wasn't even in the notes, but I think you nailed it on the head. If you are a person that makes money, you're creative, you're in the Windows environment, and you are perhaps an illustrator or perhaps a like myself, a professional photographer. Um, and you have been over the last couple of years been using something like a Wicom. Uh, that's that those tablets that um, plug in via USB or maybe wireless or even their higher end, which was the Wicom uh, Intuos. These were displays that, you know, you would buy, and they were easily $1,400 just for a display. And, oh, by the way, then you had to spend another $1,400 on your production machine. So if you're a a, a creative and you spend, on average, $2,800 on a machine every, you know, however many years you rev, you know, this, a lot, I mean, the tech presses blew up and it's like, oh my gosh, for $3,000. Well, like I just said, if you're used to spending $2,800 on a production machine, this actually is comparable in the pro sphere. And coming from Microsoft, <clears throat> they have put a lot of effort into making sure that this is a high-quality design. Mm-hmm. And, of course, the eye appeal will definitely get you to triple takes. It's definitely you, got tech sex appeal. And if you bring this into a coffee shop, <laughs> I wouldn't. But you'll need three or four tables to be able to work comfortably. Right. Uh, it limits the mobility factor, which we are both fans of. Mm-hmm. However, uh, this is something that may not be for the, the folks uh, browsing around Best Buy. This is a targeted device yeah. um, along the lines with what uh, Apple came out the following day. Right. 
And AJ, why don't you talk about the new well, MacBook? Uh, laptop. Before we do the MacBook, oh, yeah. let's also talk about because there was that that was the big woo announcement, but there was also the the Surface Book yes. that was also announced. So this is this is basically uh, again a product made by Microsoft. Uh, the Surface we've had the Surface and the Surface Pro for quite some time, but the Surface Book has only been out I think for a year, mm-hmm. and this is its successor. And basically, if you're familiar with it, it's a Surface tablet, kind of like a an iPad, but it runs Windows. And you dock it into a very special power dock that has a keyboard, extra battery, and it co-processes with your tablet. So if, uh, if you think of it in terms of an iPad with two processors, think of it that way. Uh, this dock actually supplies extra computing. So they, they made an announcement of their, their new version of this thing, and it's a little bit thinner. It's a little bit lighter. Uber battery life, I think they were touting some 16 hours on this thing. I'll believe it when I see it, when the screen is uh, bright up to 100%. But yes, that's, yes. that's good specs. It is. It is good specs. Uh, again, it's just, it, it is an interesting feat for Microsoft. I mean, for what, 18 episodes, you and I have talked predominantly in the, the Apple sphere or the iOS sphere, a little bit of Android sphere. We don't usually do a tip of the hat to, to Microsoft be largely because we typically don't use it, uh, on a day-to-day basis because it doesn't fit our workflow. But here is something where I have to give a tip of the hat to, to Microsoft. They are taking a stab, uh, a very good stab in the creative sphere. And if you're doing a lot of searching on the internet, you may see the price tag and get a little bit of sticker shot. But again, I think, Chris, you, you nailed it on the head where if you think of this as terms of this is not a Bentley, this is more Lamborghini uh, because even even in that analogy, it is it is a supercar. This is not something you take uh, to church on Sunday. This is something you drive specifically to Germany with yes. and take on the Autobahn. Exactly. Uh, the, the Microsoft Surface Book uh, is... Probably geared towards those business professionals that are uh, doing a lot of traveling because yeah. here's a great solution where in the mobile tablet format arena. arena, you can detach it and take it with you. You got a light, uh, wonderful processor, a lot of hardware specs under the hood, and uh, that can uh, take care of a lot of needs when you're away from the office. But when you get in the office and you're in heavy duty focused work, bang, you got a whole lot more specs available. Plus, it'll t- it'll most likely take a full day's charge uh, without having to plug anything in. So for those of you that don't like cords, like yours truly, uh, this would be a great solution for slimming down your office tech. Uh, so, so it's something to think about if you are in one of those offices uh, in the business world and you, you want to upgrade in your Microsoft uh, tech, this is, a, this is something to take a look at. Right. Uh, the specs, real quick, Two hundred. Uh, these are all base models, unless uh, Chris and I say otherwise. But the base model on this uh, specs out about 256 uh, gig uh, SSD. It is rocking an Intel, Intel Core i7. Uh, so you have a, a major processor in here. Uh, 8 gigs of RAM. Uh, and uh, the low, low price, Chris, if you would, for me. Oh, that's only 2,400 uh, bones. So, uh, yes, uh, for, for those of you that are able to have that in your company budget, you're going to be getting a solid device, most likely. Um, it hasn't again. really hit the, the uh, street yet, but they're really throwing a lot of attention into making something a durable, burly device for business. Yep, and and also it dovetails into creatives because it is a touchscreen. You know, this isn't, uh, we'll, we'll get to the Mac in a second, but this is a full touchscreen on this thing. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, you can use pen input, you can use gesture, you can use... Um, I hate to say this phrase, but you can use real quote unquote Photoshop. You don't have to use a specialized app. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so again, if that is the the area and arena that you're you're in, these are uh, quite frankly some interesting tools coming out of the Microsoft camp. And I, I was, you know, I'm taking a look at it because no, I can't afford a four thousand two hundred dollar roided out Surface Studio. Sure, sure. However. Um, it's it's definitely worth a look if you're in that uh, creative ilk. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about Apple for a little bit. So okay, so going from from the hi I'm a PC to hi I'm a Mac, uh, we're going to uh, hit a, a touch of genius. <laughs> a touch of genius. Well, that's if you if you go to Apple.com, that's what their their catchphrase is. Yes. is a touch of genius. Marketing. I think they hit a a blooper. Just past the second baseman uh, <laughs> for this marketing campaign. <laughs> uh, so the reason why we're chuckling is uh, so the new MacBooks were announced. This is the 25th uh, anniversary, if I recall, yes. 
of uh, the announcement of the MacBook iBook, the Mac laptop. Mm -hmm. Portable. Portable. And they did a great montage of uh, the history. It's like walking through a a history museum gallery of all the different things. Uh, But this MacBook is a little bit different because uh, we, in the tech sphere, we've always wondered when the uh, continuity of iOS and OS X or now Mac OS is going to kind of ha- shake hands. Ha ha touch. Uh, but really Apple's kind of taking the stance where they don't want to put a full fledged touchscreen in a laptop. Cause they've seen how other companies have tried that and uh, there may not have been as fabulous results. Right. And so with this new iteration of the MacBook, they decided to do, do embrace a little bit of touch in a what they're calling a touch bar and so this uh this i believe it is a retina display correct me if i'm wrong chris it's a retina display that is about the same width of the top row of your keys on your keyboard so where those function keys used to be is now a black strip of glass with a touch id scanner on the far right hand side for Apple Pay, of course. And or for switching uh, or to log in, I believe. Right. You yeah, can you can your use login it for... Just like your uh, Apple phone or iPad. Somewhat convenient. Mm-hmm. Uh, nice to be able to not worry about a password in this case. Now you get your fingerprint uh, or whatever thumbprint you want to use. And I believe to switch users, mm-hmm. that can also be as well. So if you're sharing this among other users, that's a great innovation. Right. And also with that introduction of having Touch ID on a MacBook, they also introduced a new chipset. Apple is known for knowing that doing this in the iOS uh, for their iPhones. We have the M processor, which is the motion processor in the iPhone. We massive. Have massive. I think it's motion. motion oh, motion? Oh, I like <laughs> we have massive better. Okay. We have the A processors, which are the awesome the Apple oh, okay. processor. Yes. Uh, and now they introduced, I believe, the T processor. I don't know what the T is going. Tremendous. Touch, maybe? Titanium? T- maybe. Touch, probably. Uh, touch. Uh, this I like touch, mine better. I, 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 I know. <laughs> so uh, there's this new type of processor built into this MacBook uh, Pro. Now, here's the, the curious thing. We have this only in the MacBook Pro 13 and 15 inch, not in the MacBook and they're still making a MacBook Pro 13 with those keys. So you don't have to have a, a touch of genius in your MacBook if you don't MacBook Pro if you don't choose to. This is uh, they're I I think they're trying to reach different market targets. And okay, thanks. Um, there, it's a great innovation. Some people may not be ready for it. Some people want to stick with the same environment that they have, but get better more updated specs, uh, something, a laptop that's four or five years old and it's kind of long in the tooth and may not have Mac OS Sierra compatibility. Uh, They may not want to deal with a touch bar that could theoretically fail on them. Uh, Again, we don't know because it's it's a first of its product, kind of like the Surface Studio. And how many times have we talked about avoid the uh, The first first version? (laughs) Please don't be the guinea pig in this. Yeah, let us do that. (laughs) We'll take the bullets for you folks. But uh, anyway, so they're working on trying to hit these target markets. And uh, it looks like MacBook Air, for those of you that have those uh, very slim uh, blade style MacBook laptops, they may be going, uh, you know, phasing those out. The way of the Dodo. The way of the Dodo. Um, And uh, going with the slim, very slim MacBook. No second word for the laptop. That would be their consumer, prosumer. Uh, yeah, because I mean, for the price, yeah, yeah it's, it's got to be price. consumer. Uh, for the lower end, uh, ec- economical, can we really say that? For Apple, yeah, yeah, it's for economical. Apple, okay. And then for the pro version, the creatives, the the the, the uh, Uber giant of text, like like what we're doing for video editing, mm-hmm. photo editing, audio editing. Uh, now we have a professional grade product, right? And that that touch bar isn't just a, a key replacement; it actually adapts based off of the application, kind of like what Microsoft's Dial is doing. Yes. Um, basically, if you're in Photoshop, Photoshop tools will show up there. If you're doing, I don't know, iMessage, uh, they showed off. You can have emoji up mm-hmm. on the top, or if you're doing editing for music, you can have. Uh, perhaps your timeline there or drop a beat if you're a DJ. So it's an adaptive key row, for lack of better terms, that happens to be a touchscreen. What are the specs and prices on these, Chris? So the 13-inch MacBook Pro i5 processor, uh, 2.0 gigahertz, 8 gigabytes of RAM with an Iris graphics uh, 
540, uh, $1,500 for the base model. And then if you want to kick up the, the specs, you're looking at $1,800. Right. Uh, there's a 15 inch Burley behemoth, which, uh, has Gonzo specs, I seven Radeon 450, all the, all on the Sesame seed bun for $2,400. Right. Right. So you're really getting into the upper echelon of laptop, uh, prices, but the hardware that you're getting is going to be gargantuan. Yeah, and in both of these cases, like this is Lamborghini versus Ferrari. They're both supercars. These, again, are the cars that you drive on the Autobahn a once-in-your-lifetime type of thing. You know, if you look at these and you're like, oh, these look really cool. Why are they so expensive? Probably because it's not the target market that they're going for. There are still other laptops out there. Yes, there are. Um, and they're much cheaper and they're much affordable. Or better yet, there's even last gen. If you're like, oh, I really like Apple, you can buy last generation. You can buy refurbished. If you're somebody like me, I'm actually not really drawn to the new MacBook Pro 15, even though I have one. I like my old 2014, 2015 one that I have just fine because also with these new MacBook Pros, no more SD card. So if you're a photographer, you can't put in your SD cards yep. anymore without a card reader. And everything is Thunderbolt. Yeah. So adapter palooza, please ensue. So mm-hmm. no USB. Right. Uh, so again, like if there's going to be a shift in workflows and that, I mean, that's the thing. These are tools. And if it makes more work for me, then it's worth It's not worth it to me. One of the things that Apple prides itself on is to be able to have a sleek, shiny look to all of their products. Uh, the problem is, as they innovate, they remove the ability for us to use legacy hardware. And we are now going to enter the age of the dongle or the adapter sticking out of these laptops because with the USB-C that's coming with... You, yeah, the, USB-C and Lightning. There's some weird plugage going on Right. Now. And and stay tuned for, you know, come contact us via voicemail or email if you want us to dive into some of these specs regarding that. But... We're going to be sticking a lot of things out of our laptops in the future just because of where, in order to get slim, you got to sacrifice some Something. some ports to make things work. So right. anyway, uh, high-end stuff, high-end. Yeah. The kids may not need this. No. Unless if they are professional video editors or professional photographers, uh, you may want to take another look at some other alternatives for right. Christmas shopping. But it's interesting that these high-end Lamborghini and Ferrari-style hardware kind of fits into what uh, the late Steve Jobs mentioned before he passed on. That is, in and this was five years ago to this year, he mentioned that the future of computing, you're going to always have trucks on the road. You know, yes. the, the, the computers that we just discussed. The you know, these horses. are the workhorses. However, for everybody else, sometimes you just need a Honda Civic. Mm-hmm. And that is, in Apple's modality, that is the iPad really now. Um, you know, most, most people just check email, just check uh, their Amazon. Mm-hmm. Most people can get away with doing something like a tablet um, and, and even no computer nowadays. And that's, that's kind of where we're gravitating towards. Even Microsoft's kind of chipping in with that with the Surface product. Yeah, very few times do you see on Meridian Street a Ferrari sitting in traffic. <laughs> uh, you have these wonderful cars. You're not going to be putting them into your daily commuter uh, mode. So, yeah, I mean, let's, let's, let's have the daily driver for our technology. But then should we have something that is going to be making money for us? Right. Uh, that's, these are a couple of solid alternatives. Definitely, you need some return on investment. So let's dive into our districts. We're exploring the Birchwood District. The Woodhood in Bellingham, if <laughs> you will. The Woodhood as a colloquialism here in the Beham. Yes. Uh, so where is the Birchwood District? Birchwood District is off of Northwest Avenue, uh, Northwest Avenue exit. There's a, a number of there's Shucks and Middle Schools there. Uh, the, the number of housing uh, residential areas, all Cherrywood, Cottonwood, uh, Firwood, Pinewood. Pinewood? I don't, I don't know. know. I'm Pinewood. just whatever, you know, <laughs> Hollywood if she, nah, anyway. Uh, so yes, but on Northwest Avenue, kind of in this Birchwood neighborhood, there are a, one, a number of wonderful places to go visit, to go uh, check out. And uh, for myself, whenever I'm in there, uh, if I if I wanted to go to someplace on Northwest, there is a microbrewery uh, that is – it used to take the place of a Japanese restaurant, right. which had a wonderful Zen garden in the back, but they changed ownership. Right, right. And now there's a place uh, by Jaeger's, which is everyone's favorite. We don't need to discuss that one because – See previous podcast episode. There you go. Uh, but Hops and Heads with a Z – Hops and Heads is a brewery that has a wonderful environment, and I'm all about in the environment. Uh, 
they have a daunting amount of taps available in a <laughs> in a backlit neon mir- mirrored uh, wall, which is really impressive to look at when you walk in. It's like I think they have my beer here. Uh, it's it's a lot of comfortable seating, uh, very friendly wait staff, and they have a d- decent you know bar food and everything like that. Great place to go to get a pint after a hard day of work. Or to start the weekend off. Hops and heads off of uh, Northwest in the Birchwood neighborhood. Huh, groovy. You recommended a, a tap house. And, well, yes. And, you know, I, I am all for those uh, heroes among us that are going through uh, addiction recovery for uh, alcoholism, doing the 12 steps and everything like that. And I got your back. I'm with you. However, uh, for those that, uh, you know, that want a pint, uh, this is a pretty cool alternative. Yeah. And uh, in the back, they have... A, a little bit of a putt putt golf uh, area, really? and in the warmer months, the outdoor seating is excellent. And I've been to a couple of trivia nights there uh, with, with some, some friends, and it's rather entertaining. Awesome, great environment. Awesome. What about you, AJ? So I'm going to cheat a little bit. It's it's no cheating. It, it's on the fringe. Okay, I, I'm not you, about the. <sighs> okay, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay, I don't claim this place as part of Meridian. I don't claim this place as the the, the district leading up to it, like the Fountain District or anything like right. that. It's right on the verge. Okay. And it, it's called – it's the WFC Country Store. Okay? Oh, yes, yes, so, yes, yes. So you see what I mean? It's like it's, a, not, it's not quite Squalicum. It's not quite Guide. It's not quite – it's right on the fringe. And so a shout-out to them because I, I shop there frequently. I get my dog food there. They are the – first of all, it's a, it's a farmer's co-op. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have all of the things that you could ever think of if you have pets. Even if you're me and you have the giantest, biggest Chihuahua pug yes. uh, dog, and they're reasonably priced, they have an awesome selection. Even if you have uh, animals that have, for instance, um, allergies, like you need to have some sort of hypoallergenic, check them out. Um, there's also another related WFC farmers store co-op type of thing down in Fairhaven. Uh-huh. Um, they're all part of the same co-op, but it's rebranded a different thing. Could, but this, it, could this be the hardware sales of? pet stores i think so i really like those guys uh matter of fact uh i'm I, i'm an amateur archer uh so oh. i i actually i was calling There's so her, much we get to learn about you i AJ. know right <laughs> so i i wanted to know like i was like oh man i need to get some hay bales because i was teaching my wife how to to draw a bow and so who do i call of course i'm gonna call them and so i called them and they're like you mean straw bales? I go, yes, I meant straw bales, not hay bales. Hay is for horses. Straw is for – it's the, the the autumn season. You may want some hay bales around the house. They sell, <laughs> sell hay bales there if you, need, if you need to find that. So shout out to them. I like them. I do a lot of business there. And WFC is kind of on the Birchwood stoplight right. by Meridian Street. Yes, on the way if you're going to head towards Squalicum or head towards Guide or head – it's, it's, that's what I mean. I'm going to kind of cheat, but it's not a full cheat. Go south, uh, I, uh, go south of Meridian away from – Bellis Fair uh, Mall, and then go a little while, and you'll see it on your left side, on the east east side of the road. So yeah, WFC is a great place to go. Yep. So you mentioned earlier, Chris, that if somebody wanted to get a hold of us because we maybe geeked out too much on specs, or maybe they're like, "Hey, you guys forgot this," how could they leave a voicemail? Uh, give us a call at area code two zero one seven three one eight three two four. That's 201-731-TECH, T-E-C-H. And leave us a voicemail. We'd love to put you on the air. Love to talk about it. Uh, Give us a conversation topic to shoot for. And uh, yeah, love to hear from you. But be nice about it because we like nice people. Yeah. So as we wrap stuff up, AJ, uh, give us an app or something that you're working on uh, the, on your phone that you really are digging out. So I'm really digging uh, LastPass, which is yes. a password manager, uh, announced this week that on Android, on Windows Phone, on iOS, so everybody can benefit from using LastPass password manager for free without having to pay the $12 a month for premium. They still have premium, but they bumped uh, different features up to that tier. But now everybody can use a password manager, which is what we endorse, whether it's LastPass or not, and protect your identity online. You get a last. Uh, you get a password manager. You get, you get a, password a password manager. manager. Everyone gets a password manager. No, no, LastPass. I've been a fan of for about six or seven years now. It's Same here. awesome. Uh, good choice. I have been enjoying uh, the the luxury of having a clipboard manager because I copy and paste a number of uh, snippets all the time in my communications with clients and in Got my it. composition of of things. And so, in Apple Land, in iOS Land, there is a app called Copied past tense. Uh, if you do a Google search for copied iOS, 
Uh, there's an app you can purchase for your phone, iPad, or desktop. Five bucks for mobile, eight bucks for desktop, and it will let you store the past 10, 20, 50, 100 uh, command and C copies that you have saved instead of just having one. You know, when you copy something and, and paste it, you copy something again, it overwrites it. Hmm. This one keeps a history of it. And so now I can refer back. And I copy this one for this, and it just seems to be, it's getting ubiquitous for a lot of my history in my uh, communication. So check that out if you are in Apple land. Uh, it may cost a little bit of change, but I think you'll save a lot of money and some keystrokes and some time. Yeah. And time is money. So mm -hmm. there you go. And copy, that's with vowels, right? C-O-P-I-E-D. Okay. Yes. Just making right. sure. Yes. That wraps it up for this edition of BPM Tech. Thank you so much again for joining us, rating us, reviewing us, and listening to us on your favorite podcaster of choice, whether it's on the iTunes Store, the Google Play Store, Spreaker, that's Speaker but with an R, or even SoundCloud. I'm AJ Barsay. And with a raspy sore throat, I am Chris Powell. Thanks very much for listening in. We'll see you next time.